Did you know that wood can be a great source of food? You can chop it up into little pieces, put those in a pan, put a little oil on them, salt and pepper. We want our wood to be seasoned. Fry them up. You could do it that way, <laughs> but it's not very good. I'm gonna show you a much better way that you can turn your wood into a delicious, nutritious, and abundant source of food. The first thing we need to do is go get some wood so I can show you how we do this. Today I wanna to use white oak. I just happen to have some overcrowded white oak trees down here that I wanna thin out. You can do this all kinds of ways. You can use sawdust, wood chips, but the way we're doing it today, I'm looking for pieces about this big, four to six inches diameter. Today we'll use the battery powered chainsaw. Most of the time I use my long barred saw so I don't have to bend over, but there are viewers who throw a conniption fit about that. They don't like me using that long barred chainsaw. Maybe using this today will allow them to relax and chill out a little bit. I'm a giver. I'm cutting these to about four feet long. There's no magic in four feet. It's a size that's easy to manage. Now we're gonna inoculate these logs with fungus, but not any fungus, the type of fungus that makes shiitake mushrooms. The mycelium, which is the body of the fungus, will go through the logs, they'll eat the logs, and turn them into mushrooms, which are much better for us to eat than just eating the wood by itself. Shiitakes are one of the more common mushrooms to grow with logs, partly because they're so simple and it's easy to have good success with them. There are other edible mushrooms you can do this with too, and other methods, you can use sawdust, wood chips. If there's enough interest in this, maybe we'll do that on another video, show some other methods and other mushrooms. And we're not talking about funny mushrooms here, we're just talking about regular mushrooms that you can eat. The kind you eat because you're hungry, not the kind you eat because you wanna do funny things. Inoculating the logs is easy. Today we're gonna use this. This is the easiest way to do it. I got this mushroom growing kit from North Spore. It comes with everything you need except for the logs and the drill. This is the spawn we'll be using. But it does come with a 5 16 drill bit that we'll need. We'll drill some holes in the logs, then we'll put these wooden dowels in the holes that are inoculated with the spawn. We'll use some tape to mark a spot on the drill bit as a gauge so we'll drill the right depth for the plug. You can use a regular drill. We want to drill every four to six inches. We'll just make a straight line the full length of the log. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Straight-ish. Go up to a couple inches from the end. Nothing here has to be precise. Fungus doesn't use tape measures, it doesn't care that much. After we've drilled the length of the log, we'll turn it two, three inches. First line of holes is here, we'll do another line of holes here. We got the two holes here, we'll stagger it so it's in between those two holes. So we have a triangle shape. So then the next two holes are here, we'll do the next hole right here, and on and on. Turn it again, do another row the same way, putting our hole staggered between the last row. You keep drilling these lines of holes, turning it until you're about two or three inches away from the first line of holes you made. Now we take these plugs and a hammer of choice, pound them in until they're flush with the bark. Some of these plugs are already growing in the bag. All this white material is the fungus mycelium that's growing all around these plugs. 
We'll get these out of the bag and into the log so the mycelium can colonize the log and turn it into food. I got this one finished, all the holes plugged. I did the same thing to this one. And I have this much left over. One of these small kits is enough for two or three logs. These are both small logs. This probably would have been enough for two larger logs. And I think I plugged them a little bit heavy. So if I plugged it a little lighter, more spacing in between the plugs, I probably could have got three logs. Now that's all you have to do to inoculate them. These could be done right now the way they are, but there's one more optional step, and that is to cover these plugs with wax. The main purpose of the wax is to seal up these holes, hold in moisture so these don't dry out. My dad grows shiitake mushrooms this way. He doesn't use wax, but he lives over on the coast where it's a cool, wet climate. Here, we have really hot, dry summers. It might be advantageous to use wax. I'm gonna do a little experiment here. I'm gonna wax one, not wax the other one, compare the difference. To show you how to do that first, we'll travel back in time to earlier today when I started melting the wax. Inside the mushroom grow kit, we have a package of wax. I don't know if I've ever seen granular wax before. We need to melt the wax. You could put it in a pot, put it on a cook stove, but the clever people at North Spore suggested putting it in a crock pot to melt it. We'll plug the crock pot into the AFRI power station. Now we're back in the present, the wax is melted. In the mushroom kit, there is a swab. You blip that into the wax, then blip that onto the plug. The swab has just enough wax to cover it. I got them all waxed. You're also going to lose moisture from the end of the logs. It's good to seal those too. We could use the swab or a brush to brush it on, or we can just do what those clever folks at North Spore do. Just dip it in there. So that did a good job. As well as that turned out, I'm going to do that to the other end. Again, the wax is optional. If you have more of a moist climate or you can keep the logs moist, you might not need the wax. One of the advantages of wax is the end of the logs won't dry out, so the mycelium will grow all the way to the wax, and you can see it growing under the wax. That way you'll be able to see that the log's being colonized. Plus, it's just a fun party trick. The kids will love it. Inoculating with these wooden plugs are the easiest way to go. You don't need any special tools, but the plugs are a little more costly. A more economical way to go, especially if you want to do a lot of logs, is to use this, the sawdust spawn. Well, this stuff's already trying to grow. A package of this will plug a lot more logs. To do it that way, you're going to need some special tools. You'll need a 12 millimeter drill bit and an applicator, both of which I got from North Spore. The bit can be used with a regular drill motor. It already has a built-in depth gauge. The drill works great, but if you have a lot of logs to plug, you can speed up the process by using this goodie that I got from North Spore. It's an adapter for an angle grinder. You can put the bit in it. I don't have a cordless angle grinder here, so we'll just plug it into the AFRI power station, which gives you electricity wherever you go. Angle grinder is fast, so I better put on eye protection. We're getting serious now. Yeah, that really gets down to business. We drill the holes the same way we did before, the same kind of spacing. We take our applicator tool, jam it in here a few times so it fills up with sawdust. The end of it is filled up with sawdust spawn. Stick that over the hole and right in. Very easy. Just keep doing that until all the holes are filled.
using the sawdust spawn is supposed to be faster at colonizing the log and more effective. You just have to buy a couple tools. This and a drill bit unless you have a 12 millimeter drill bit. But that thing is dynamite on the angle grinder. I'm impressed with how fast it is. This goes pretty fast too. I think this is faster than the dowels. With all those filled, we can optionally wax it just the way we did before. That's it, they're done. Pronto punto gusto, which I don't think actually means anything. I think I made that up. Now you can store the logs somewhere in a shady place, preferably somewhere where they won't get direct sun and wind, close to the ground where they can stay as damp as you can keep them. Well, not as damp, you don't want them completely soaked. You just don't want them to dry out. In drier climates, you might have to water them some to keep them moist. This is the first time I've tried these here where we have a really hot, dry summer climate. If there's interest in the subject, we can find out in future videos how this works keeping these alive here. It can take six months to up to a year or more for the mycelium to colonize the logs before they start fruiting with mushrooms. Mushrooms are like the fruiting body of the fungus. It's like an apple off of an apple tree. Mushrooms are to apples as mycelium is to the apple tree. Did I say that right? Did that even make sense? Well, it made sense to me. You want to do this with fresh cut logs only. According to North Spore, it's best to do this within a week or two of cutting the logs. And it's best to do this before the trees go into full bud and start leaving, leafing, leafing out. Not leaving out, leafing out. Not leafing, leafing, leafing out. Before they start growing leaves. But after those leaves mature, in the summer through the fall, winter, until right before the trees start leafing out, that's a good time to do this. The idea there is in the spring, the sap starts flowing out of the trunk along with the sugars and nutrients up into the small branches and buds to produce leaves. It's better to cut the logs at the time of the year when the sugars and nutrients are inside the logs so the mycelium can have at it. I've also been told it can make some difference, but it doesn't make a lot of difference what time of year you do it. But I've been told a lot of things. For shiitake mushrooms, it's best to use oak. I think maple works too. And there may be some other hardwoods they'll grow in too. But there are other mushrooms that can use other types of wood. North Spore can give you more information about that on their website. I'll put a link in the description to North Spore's website where you can buy all the materials you need for growing all kinds of mushrooms except for the logs and the drill. You gotta supply that yourself. They have a lot of good information on their website. Their material comes with easy to read instructions. They did contact me and sent me the materials I used, the spawn and the couple tools I used, but that worked out nicely. I made a couple videos a while back cutting logs for other people, and people in the comments were asking me to do videos on how to process the logs like what we did today. I never did it before because I was never the one growing the mushrooms, but my dad grows them, my cousin grows them, my neighbor grows them. When I'm at the coast, it's so nice having access to his mushroom logs that are producing really tasty, abundant food sometimes. Sometimes these logs can produce a lot of mushrooms and they can produce for years. And it would be really nice to have some of these logs producing here too. If you would like to be able to turn wood into delicious, nutritious food, check out North Spore below and stay tuned here. We'll do more on mushrooms unless nobody watches and nobody's interested. Then maybe we'll go back to doing videos about swatting mosquitoes with sticks or something like that. Yeah.